Poor Confederate flag-waving whites are too caught up in revisionist fantasies of the Old South to care that the flag represents their oppression. In 1861, a writer in the elite periodical called Southern Literary Messenger urged Confederate leaders to watch and control poor whites, permitting them to have as little political liberty as we can without degrading them. This was a popular sentiment among Southern intellectuals and slave owners who were overwhelmingly opposed to class mobility and universal education. Set aside South Carolina Senator in 1837, it is better that a part should be fully and highly educated and the rest utterly ignorant. While elite Southerners flourished thanks to the free labor of slaves, poor whites had few job opportunities or chances to ascend the social ladder. Without universal public schooling, there were little to no chances of a poor white to go to college, get professional jobs, own land, or become a political threat. One of the Southern white elite's biggest fears was a class war. One of the leading voices was South Carolina's James Henry Hamm who asserted that there must be a class to do the menial duties to perform the drudgery of life. He claimed that this was slaves in Southern society, and by allowing free blacks and whites to make up the labor force, it would only be a matter of time before they sparked a class revolution. Another Southerner said that the Union agenda was not just the abolition of slavery, but inciting class revolution in the South. So clearly, the Civil War for the Confederacy was about not just slavery, but also keeping the poor white population poor. During the war, the Confederacy inflicted class discrimination on poor whites in a few ways, beginning with the fact that poor whites were drafted more frequently. Wealthy whites could skip the fighting if they had over 20 slaves and were granted leave much more frequently than poor ones. They also paid the same exact tax rate as poor whites to fund the war, even though the goal of continuing slavery would only benefit the wealthy. Said one Alabama recruit, they think all you are fit for is to stop bullets for them, our betters, who call you poor white trash. It's no wonder that so many poor whites deserted during the war, something that many modern Confederate flag-waving white Americans ignore or simply don't know. Out of a total 750,000 to 850,000 Confederate soldiers, it's established that at least 103,000 deserted.